Why are we starting? One, two, eight, you say. Which question? Yeah, so the answer is wrong for that. I calculated again with the other students. So I'll do it again now if you like. Could you be so Which one? Yeah, well, well, we can do whatever. We're just starting with 128 question 10 now. Page 128, question 10. So, do you all have that open, guys? 128, question 10? Come on. What the heck are you doing there? You never sit this close to me. What's. <laughs> I'm suspicious. You're up to something. No. All right. Are you open? Page one two eight. Yeah, you got that. One two eight. Question ten. It is known that fifty five percent of births are boys. What is the probability that in thirty births most are boys? So that's the probability of sixteen or more boys. Right, so the problem here is that um, the probability is 0.55 and our table book doesn't include a 0.55. So what we can do is flip this around and think about it as 14 or fewer girls. So we now look up the table book, table 30, with P as 0.55. Or five and x as 14 and if you do that you'll get 0 0.6448 as the answer yeah, yeah but that's for the girls. no I now I said the answer it needs to be fixed so that is the right answer now what what's wrong no but that's the percentage that's for the uh, for the girls that's for 14 or fewer girls, yeah. which is the same as 16 or more boys. That's for this question. Is it? Doesn't make sense. I don't know. How can I put this? Okay. Imagine you have five people, and I said to you, what's the probability four of them will be boys? Do you understand that that's yeah. exactly the same as if I said, what's the probability one of them will be a girl? Yeah. So when I switch from 16 or more boys to 14 or fewer girls, I haven't changed the probability. They both represent the same event. Yeah. Is that okay? I'm kind of seeing 50-50 here. Yeah. The yes with the no. Yeah. yeah. I can do that again, that's no problem. Um, we'll just get these three first, okay? It just gets confusing. No, I know it does, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, continue. Yeah. Guys, what's all the chit chat? Do we have any questions on this? You're writing this down, Daniel? Okay. I'll drink some coffee then. Yeah, come up here. I have a formula book here, a spare one. So, we were using the table here on page 14. Okay. Sebi, come here. Before you sit down, thank you. Hand that one down as well. Who wanted it? You wanted it there. Uh, I have exactly one formula book left if anyone else needs one. No? Okay. Right. Uh, 11 now. You got that, Daniel? A fair coin is tossed 20 times. Find the value of x 
So that, okay, so if I, I, if I put it as a mathematical statement, I'm looking for some number of x so that I can say the probability that you get x heads or fewer is equal to 0 0.05. Like really that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for an x so that I can say, like for example, maybe it's five. So I'm looking for some number so that five or less of these he uh, as heads would be 5%. So really, all you're doing here is just looking backwards. You're looking for the answer to be 0 0.05. You know n, what's n here? Uh, it's 20. And p? 0 0.5, that p. Uh, and the x is something we don't know and we want the answer in the table book to be 0 0.05. Now the problem is you can't get exactly 0 0.05. I think the closest one is something like 0 0.057. 58. So what value of x did that correspond to? Ten. Six. Oh, six. Sorry. So the probability of getting six or fewer heads is about it's about five percent. Um, yeah. Question, right? Oh, because I said in the question it's a fair coin. Oh. Yeah. Uh, did I say it's a fair coin? Yeah. yeah. Um, you have to be careful in the exam because sometimes they might have information that's kind of not hidden but within the choice of words rather than they explicitly say 0 0.5 you know so just to be careful with that yeah they really should so if they didn't you'd be right in asking the supervisor to confirm if it's a fair coin or not because they they really really should and if they didn't that would be certainly a mistake on their part yeah yeah, anything like that. Well, not cards, I don't think. Because you can't really make a deck unfair. You know, like you can't make cards, you can't make certain cards appear more likely if you shuffle them, I don't think. Right? You can't, can you? Like, what could you do to the card to make it more likely to come out? The way you shuffle it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. No. Uh, you can have coins or dice that are unfair because their weight might not be balanced correctly. I don't really think you can do it with cards though. No, they might not say the deck is fair because it's assumed always that it's always fair for a deck of cards, but not for a coin or a dice. A die. Uh, okay, uh, that's 11. So on to 12 now? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's a form going around where you have to put your GNIB number on it. Okay. Can you pass it back and across? Okay, you're good. Okay. Got, got that, guys? Is it just uh, Mariam, is it, that has to fill it out? Um, no one else? I don't have Mariam. You don't have what? Okay, you don't know your number or expiry date. No, the expiry date you probably know. It's 30th of the 9th, isn't it? No, some people have it for November. It's so weird. Oh, right, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. The person who needs this information is Emer. So you could, I suppose, you could just email her directly today when you get home. Okay. Don't you need to carry your card around with you all the time, or is that not a rule? No. No, but I'm curious. Is that a rule that you need to have your card? Is it a rule, Daniel? You're supposed to have it on you? Yeah, yeah. The guard might ask you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay.
Um, if you see some of your classmates later today, you can let them know that Emer needs this information. All right, 12. A PIN code... Don't say anything, all right? A PIN code is made up of four digits. And the digits could be anything between zero and nine. Okay? So I want the probability with at least a zero. So I want at least one of these to be digit, digit to be zero. Now I don't care how many are zero. I don't care where the zero is. I just care about having one zero. At least one zero. So that's equal to one minus the probability of not at least one zero. What is the meaning of not at least a zero? Well, like what's a simpler way to say that in English? No. Now think carefully. If I said not at least a zero. No, no, no. Think, think. Not at least a zero. Yeah. No zeros. You know, That's if you said, I don't even have at least one euro, that means you've got no money. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Doesn't that mean it's like more than zero? Yeah. One oh. zero is one zero. More than zero is one. More than zero is one zero. You could say it as each digit is more than zero. Yeah. That's a very weird way to say it, though, but you could say that. So, what's the probability the first one is not zero, or as you say, more than zero? So, how many numbers are not zero? Nine over ten. Nine over ten is the probability. And the next one? Zero point three four three nine is the answer here. Um, by the way, not only is this an exam style question for your IFY exam, this is also an exam, exam style question for your Charles exam. I can easily, easily see a question like this uh, MCQ question on the Charles exam. Easily. The probability question on the Charles exam, I don't think, is too hard. So this would be a, a typical question. Yeah. <coughs> is that okay, guys? So they know if they give us one minute in the Charles No, they definitely don't. Definitely don't. To memorize everything. It's not too bad. <laughs> I think the difficult one is you will have to know all your area and volume yeah. formulas. That's kind of going to be the tricky one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll, yeah. But I was talking to Colin yesterday, so I think we're we'll start some kind of preparation class soon, um, because I want to cover topics which are on the Charles exam but not on the IFY exam. It's not not too much, but it is a little bit. Uh, Okay, can I do the B part now? Yes. Yeah. What is the probability of seeing at most five pins like this in the sample of 30? So, uh, you have 30 pins, uh, and the probability that you'll get a pin that looks like this. Now, of course, there is no 0 0.3439 in the table book. What's the closest match we can get? No, no, I think we can do better. 3-5. Three, five. And we want at most 5. So that means 5 or fewer. Uh, all right, so this is 
not a bad question for the exam. What else do we need to see now? You page said there's loads of questions. Yeah, page 130. Um, 12 and 18. 12 and 18. and 18. Now the answer for 12 yeah, and 18. I think they're all right. So let's have a look. 12. Can I scroll down? Yeah. Okay, so 12. We have our Z random variable. And we want to know how likely is Z to be between minus 1.5 and minus 1. Uh, this is page 130. And this is question 12, isn't it? This couldn't be... It's all right now? Yeah, it's all right now. Are you for real? <laughs> I just wrote the question down. Not <laughs> uh, Well, allow me to continue to do it. So, uh, we want the area between minus 1.5 and minus 1. So that means we have to look up which value first? One. Uh, minus 1, yeah. And then minus. And then we have to look up which value next? Minus 1.5. This gives us the area to the left of minus 1 and to the left of minus 1.5. And by subtracting, we get the area in between. Now, uh, before I calculate it, it's, it's a good idea to have a rough, a rough answer in your head. So I kind of know for a fact the answer should be smaller than 0 0.5, right? Because half of this is 0 0.5. So, you know, very, very roughly, what might you guess the answer to be? 0.25, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, something, something like this, roughly. Okay, what's the problem with this calculation, though? Can we look up the value of minus 1? No, because no, no negative values in it. So we have a rule to let us flip it into the positive. And flip this into the positive. Uh, 1 and minus 1 cancel. So minus minus 1.5 is 1.5. Minus, and then we look up 1. So we look up these two values and minus them. Uh, and then we have to round the answer off to the nearest percent. So when you minus these two values from the table book, you'll get about 9% rounded off. Hmm? Did you have to fit? No, that's exactly the same question uh, Mohammed asked in the other lecture. Minus minus 1.5 is 1.5. Yeah. Minus 1 is minus 1. I didn't flip anything, I just expanded. You get 0 0.0919. Yeah, and I say in the question to the nearest percent. Don't what? I don't what do you mean you don't get what Z is? What is it's percent? a random variable. It takes on random values. On average, its value is zero. It's usually between minus two and two. What? No, what? It, like what? Yeah, hence the word random. <laughs> I have no idea what you're asking me. Give me a question that has a question mark at the end. Pi is 3.14 blah, blah, blah. There's no question mark at the end of that. No, that's the start of the question. Yeah. So I don't need any background. Point. It's okay. I know a bit about maths. <laughs> so what is a... A random variable. That's what it is. It's a random variable. It's like saying, you know, what is a student's height? Like, well, which student? Because if you don't know which student, it's random. You know? It doesn't have a single value. It's a random variable. It's like saying, what's the outcome of a dice? You don't know until you measure it. So at the moment, it's a random variable. You know? You're thinking it should have a single value. No, it takes multiple values. Each time you measure it, it's something different. 
It, think of it like rolling a rolling a dice. Except this dice gives you numbers between minus two and two. Okay, um, any number between minus two and two. Right. What's the other one you had to do, Mo? Uh, uh, Eighteen. Eighteen. Hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's that's a hard one. All right. Okay. Can I scroll down to eighteen? Right, so I give you a bit of information. I tell you there's some number x, so that the probability of being less than x is about 0 0.109. So that must mean x is somewhere over here, so that this area is, what is it, 0 0.109, etc., etc., etc. I also say there's some value of y, so that the probability of being between x and y is uh, 0 0.825, etc. Yeah. And it looks like x is negative and y is positive from the numbers. Hmm? Say again? It's going to be two equations, yeah. So here, the table book value of x has to be 0 0.109. And here the table book value of y minus the table book value of x has to equal 0.825. Yeah. yeah, I think it would be good to substitute this in because am I just looking for the y? No, I say find the value of x and y, so I'll have to do both. Uh, so I might as well get the x first because I have one equation with x in it. x is negative though. Can we look up negatives? No. Uh, yes, you could think about it like this as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip this. I'm going to say this is 1 minus table book value of minus x equals 0 0.109. Because remember I said x is negative. So minus x is positive. If x is negative, then minus x is positive. Yeah? Okay, so 1 minus 0 0.109. 109, etc., etc., that equals table book value of minus x. So, what is 1 minus 0 0.109? And then we need to look that up in the table book. One sec, one sec, let me just find my blooming table. What page is that table on? Page 9. There it is, okay. Uh, 1 minus 0 0.109, etc., etc. What number was that? 0 0.891. All right, so what value will give you 0 0.891? Roughly 1.23, you think? Yeah. Okay, 1.23, we'll say. So that means that minus x must have been 1.23. So that means x was minus 1.23. Okay. Now, what I'll do is I'll sub this in here to get the y. So table book y minus 0 0.109 equals 0 0.825. So table book y equals uh, 0 0.825 plus 0 0.109. So what's that? 0 0.934, is it? Uh, let's look this up. So what value would give you that? About 1.5? 1.51 about? Okay, so you, you got roughly minus 1.23 and 1.51. What number was that? 18? Nice. It's fine if it's not in uh, yeah, well, what do you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Three significant figures as usual. These are three significant figures. Okay. Uh, that was a hard one, for sure. It re this question really tests that you can understand how to read the table. Okay, you're writing this down?
that while you're writing that down, let me take the attendance here. Uh, Mahmoud? Gafar? Yeah, there you are. Amjad? Zara? Yeah. Mo? Yeah. Daniel? Yes. Savi? Yes. Sabrina? Alfreda? Yes. Arya? Yes. Chidi? Yes. Young Pang? Yes. Amna? Yes. Mariam? Yes. Oh, so just Sabrina missing. Okay. Right, what's next? What's next? Uh, there's only one question. Uh, uh, how do we solve the percentage? Which question? Mm, 17. Ah, okay, 17. Yeah. Can I scroll down? Not yet? Okay. Yeah, convert to decimal and look it up. So it's 0 0.0808. And when you look up 0 0.808, you get the answer. No, that's, that's all it is. That's all it is. That's all it is. No, no, don't make your life difficult. Okay. Your life's difficult enough, you know? You're in my class. You don't need to make it more difficult. All right, what else do we need? Hmm? Yes. One twenty. Which question am I looking at? Okay. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> the die is rolled seven times. What's the probability that each result differs? Yeah. We're, we're just. Good one. It's an interesting one. Um, how many sides does a die have? Six. Six. And if you roll it seven times, how likely it is that you'll always get a different number? Zero. Zero. Is it six? Yeah. So by the seventh roll, you're forced to get one of the numbers that you got in the previous six. No. It was kind of a sneaky question. It's at least one. Hmm? Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, you're forced to have at least one match. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> it's possible that all seven match, but because there's seven, it has to be at least a match. Okay. Uh, what else, though? No more questions? Yeah. It's like Dungeons and Dragons or something. Yeah. But you know, don't let the class know you're a total geek. Keep this stuff to yourself. Yeah. 126. 126? Which one? Eight. Which one? Eight. Eight. Yeah. 126, question 8. Page 126, question 8. So, you draw three cards from a deck, but each time you put the card back in and draw again. So, re replace them. What is the probability that you'll get two aces, and the second ace you draw on the last drawing? So that means this last one here must be an ace. Okay? So, you don't care about where the ace is in the first two. It could be here on your first draw, or it could be here in your second draw. So when you don't care about where it is, just how many there are, what type of problem is that? That's binomial. 
So, binomial. Um, two, C, how many aces? Four. I mean, how many do we want? In this one is one. And the probability of a successful ace is four over 52. One of those. And then you want a non-ace, a failure. Yeah? So that's 48 over 52. Uh, no? One. Yeah. And it's this and... So multiply. The last one's an ace. Four over 52. And you put that in and you get the answer. And I guess the answer is quite small. This one here? Yeah. It means you're drawing cards and you get two aces in three draws. I want to know what ace is. What do you mean? Because I, I don't really know what ace is. What ace is? What ace is. Oh, ace. It's the card before two. Or after, or after king. Yeah, basically number one. Number one, basically, just, yeah. Just think of it that's so, ace of hearts, two of hearts, three of hearts. Ace is the first one. Yeah. You don't play cards? No. Ah. I round up to 1%. Yeah. What's next now? Which one's next? Yeah, same idea. They will provide that info in the question. They probably won't do it a card question. They usually do colored beads in a bag or something like that. Oh, is it not this? Zero point zero one zero nine. Okay. Are you 100% sure you typed it in right? Yeah, this is why I'm Okay, zero point zero Okay, fair enough, I'll fix that. What number was that? This is one, two, six yeah. question. Okay, dokie. Okay. Okay. Zero point zero one oh nine. I would believe if one of you said it, but two of you got this, so... Three. Three, okay. Amjad got it, so it's definitely right. <laughs> right, what's next? Sir, is this as hard as it would be in the exam or anyone? Yep. For binomial? Yeah. Yeah, in fact... Um, the... The hard, the hard binomial ones that they like to give are what I call the nested ones. So this is when you have, like, say, a tray, and you want to know what's the probability three of the four seeds will grow. And then you have ten trays, what's the probability that five of the trays will be successful growth? You know? It's a problem in a problem. This is the hard ones that they like to give. I call these, like, nested problems. Um, this one they don't really do in the exam is a difficult one. I mean, they could. That's why I'm covering it. But 
for difficult binomials, they like to make it a nested question as the last part. Right, uh, what, what else now do we need to see? What page? Uh, I would just like a small question. Yeah. 12A. Which page? 126. 126. 12A. Yeah, but uh, what's the probability of automatic bracket i at n equals 1? When we do the probability of n equals 1, you're the only one, right? No, there's three people. Because read the question. Yeah. What's the very first four words I say? Reading the question is a good thing. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Do you know how to do number 12? It's a hard one. Mm -hmm. Have you tried it, Mo? Uh, no. Did anyone try number 12 on 126? I didn't look. <coughs> okay. But what about 12 on 126? Anyone try it? No? Mm -hmm. How far did you get, Aria? And Mo? 11. 11. Will we do number 12? Sure. Yeah? Guys, number 12 on 126? Mm. It's quite hard. Now, I won't. Uh, in number 12, I have I it. Huh? I don't think we'll get like B and C in the example. Of course not. Mm. But, yeah. like I said before, it's good if you can do hard ones in class because it'll make the exam see easy. You know? You want the exam to seem easy. Yes. Yeah. 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 So if I'm doing these, if I, it's okay to do one or two difficult questions that won't be on the exam. You know, it might expand your understanding. Maybe. Right. Let's have a look at twelve. So twelve has three parts to it. I ask you to consider if n is one, n is five, or n is fifty. So I'll just do it for the example of n is five. Okay. So um, in that case, what has happened is. You have 10 people, and then one extra person joins the group. So you have 11 people in total. Uh, and you imagine you're this one extra person. Okay, so this could be you, for example. And you want to know, we saw this before, what is the probability that your vote will make a difference? So in other words, uh, what is the probability that your vote is worth anything, that it will make a difference? Well, what is this only situation in which your vote will matter? 50%. Yeah, it'll only matter if five people vote yes and five people vote no. Because if ten people vote yes, then your 11 vote has uh, no, no value. So, what is the probability that we'll have those ten people break 50-50? That's 10 C5, 0 0.55, 0 0.55. Can you calculate that? What do you get? That's not question twelve. That's twelve uh, situation two. Seven point five one times the power of No. No. Absolutely no. Zero point two. 0 0.246. Roughly 25% of the time. We did something like it before. Okay, continue. I'm getting to it. I've only done the first part, literally A, the probability. Patient man. A. B. Okay. Give me a sec. All right. So before we continue, let's just have a clear picture in our mind. When you join this group of 10 people, there's a 25% chance that your vote... Uh, will actually make a difference and what you have to vote on will actually break a tie but that means also there's a 75% chance that it doesn't really matter what you vote because the other people have a majority 
Uh, so 25% is pretty big. It's pretty big. You know, a one in four chance that your vote actually counts. So the next part is if the passing of the vote will result in a pay rise for the teacher of a thousand dollars, how much is your vote worth? Okay, so it, it's good to think about this as a, a probability tree. Okay, so can I scroll down a little bit? So either two things will happen. About 25% of the time, or what was it, 0 0.246, your vote will actually be worth something. Okay? And then what's the other one? 0 0.753. Your vote is... Uh, 7.54. Oh, 7.54. Your vote is worthless. Okay. So 24% of the time, your vote could be the vote that makes the teacher get the pay rise. So how much is it worth to the teacher in this situation? Your vote would be worth $1,000. You know, imagine the 10 people have voted, and it's a tie, and you have to the, cast the decide and vote. How much is that vote worth to the teacher? It's worth exactly a thousand dollars because literally your vote could change the outcome for the teacher. In this situation, how much is your vote worth to the teacher? It's worth nothing because the decision has already been made by the other ten. So its value is zero, uh, zero dollars. Also zero euros. Um, so because this is random, we need to calculate the expected value. Because not always is it worth $1,000, only sometimes is it worth $1,000, and sometimes it's worth zero. So how much do we expect it to be worth on average? So that would be 0 0.754 times zero. Remember the formula? The value times the probability plus the value times the probability. 246. So that's $246. So on average, that is how much your vote is worth, on average. It's worth $246 to the teacher. You can solve this without the formula. Which, yeah. Just the logic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? This is the expected value of the worth. That's okay. What's wrong, Amjad? Uh, that's with 10 people, right? Yeah. Well, why don't you just multiply? Multiply what? That's the probability of. Is that right? That's what I just said. Can I go down to C? C now. Uh, so the question then is. How much do you bribe the eleventh person? Okay, so well, uh, yeah, well, let's think about this. Here's the teacher; they want to give some money to the eleventh person. You know, you want to give them some money and say, "Please vote yes." How much should they give? Well, you could say they could give. 246. So that would mean you would have plus 246. Okay? Uh, or you could say you could give plus, you could give them nothing. You could give zero, you know? Um, if you give 246, though, that might not be good for you to do because think about it like this. If you give them 246 to vote yes, do you definitely get the $1,000? No, you only probably get the $1,000. In fact, if you think about it, um, if you give them the 246, that's kind of not, that, that's not really great for you because it means you're no better or worse off. You know, like, um, think about it like this. Imagine that the teacher gives no money to the 11th person. Does that mean they don't get the pay rise? 
No, they could get the pay rise. They could get it. But he could be the deciding factor. But he could be, you know. So given the 246 leaves you neutral, if you give, say, 123, if you split this in two, then both of you are happy. This person has $123 that they didn't have before. This person loses $123, but that's okay because they've made it more likely that they'll get uh, a yes. And the expected value of getting a yes is plus 246. So in total, they're still better off by 1, 2, 3. So the best thing to do is to split the worth of the vote in two. So you both get the same expected uh, gain from the bribe. Yeah? Then it would be better to multiply by the probability of him uh, voting. So like then... Yeah, but well that's what the 246 represents. Oh, well, you don't know. Yeah. You're assuming everybody's 50-50. Yeah. Then, then it should be like $22. Yeah. No. So the, the aim of this question is to determine the expectation between one. The aim is to the, you want to make the expectation bigger for you. So if you give 246 over, your expectation is zero. So you expect again. If you give 246, I think it might be zero. So it's half the expectation. Yeah, can I draw something to help? Can I scroll down a bit? Yeah, can I scroll down? So look, here's the teacher here. Let's imagine that they gave over 246. Okay, so you have two possibilities. Number one, 0 0.75. 5% we'll just say and 0.25% here okay this possibility here what do we say uh, the, well, now do you know what I'm not going to continue because it's already going to get more complicated and it's only going to confuse you more and I think I've done more than what I need to for the exam they're never going to ask you anything like this on the exam. I just wanted to show you that it's possible to work out what a good amount is to bribe someone so that both parties are uh, happy. Yeah. Him first, then you. Would it be the good amount to be multiplying it by the probability of what his, uh, his vote is worth? So like 246 multiplied by 0 0.2. $60. Yeah, but that 246 came about because we already multiplied it by 0 0.24. Remember, yeah. it was a thousand times 0 0.24. So we already included in that number the probability of how much this vote is worth. So if you multiply it by again, again, it's like you've counted in the probability factor twice. Yeah. Yeah. I You could, no you could, you could. But assuming that he's doing the same calculation that you're doing. Then he should be getting 246 if he does that calculation. Yeah, but, but think about it like this. If you offer him $10, he doesn't have to accept it. If he knows that there's potential to get more out of you. It's like those games children play. You know that game where uh, I, dis I have some sweets and I split, them uh, I split them between the two of us. And if you say no, then both of us get nothing. And if you say yes, we both keep the amount. So what usually happens is most kids, they give a little to you and a lot to me, thinking, well, he won't vote no, because then we both get nothing. But the other, stu the other kid is so uh, annoyed that the uh, split wasn't even that they're happy to make it bad for both of them. So it's the same logic here. If you only offer $10 when there's a possibility of getting more, then you won't go for it. So the only reasonable thing to do is the gains get split 50-50. Yeah, but if you gave them a higher than 123, that would make more sense for the kid who loses. If he does it, yeah, but who, but he knows that his vote is worth the one that works the dollars. Yeah, but why would you give more than you need to? You know? No, why then, okay, yeah, by more than what, they, what you need to, I mean the 123. Yeah. Yeah. 
I suppose technically you could bribe the person any amount more than 123. Yeah. But that wouldn't be rational. You know, like if I have 10 sweets, why would I give you nine and keep one for me? Like I'm sure you'd vote yes for that, but that's not in my interest. You know, we want to make it a profitable for both. Yeah. Will the Christian be unseen above um, expectation questions? Yeah, they are. They're about expectation questions, yeah. Yeah? Um, the expectation question is about what C is. It is kind, well, not really C, perhaps. And so is the B, which is the logic. Yeah, that's what those two guys were saying. Okay, what else do we need to see? Oh no, did I wrap it up there? Um, before you go, just to double check, everybody who can sign this now has? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Okay. Um, we have class after lunch. Good. Okay. So we need the table book again after lunch. So try to remember to bring that. Yeah. Not had time to think about it. I've been so busy since yesterday. I'll have to, I, I still have to think about it. Sir, can you